Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Tea Time Tuesday. I'm so excited that you are here with us today at the Renewal Center. We're streaming live in the historic district of, of Concord, and we're so excited. Good afternoon. My name is Carmela E. Head. I'm the Director of Renewal and Community Programs here at the Renewal Center, and we are excited that you are joining us. Good afternoon to every Tea Timer. Hello. I see my Aunt Niecy's out there this morning. Good afternoon, Aunt Niecy. It's good that you're joining us. And those of us that are tuning in, those of you that will be coming in, we want to welcome each and every one to Tea Time Tuesday. Go ahead and share this broadcast on your social media pages so that we can let everyone know that the Renewal Center is streaming live and we are ready for a time of pause. We are ready for a time of reset and building resilience. And that's what we do with our renewal practices every Tuesday at 12 noon. So go and invite your friend, get your friends and your family, share it on your social media pages. And those of you that tap into our broadcast over there at YouTube, go and invite someone to join us over there as well on YouTube. Good afternoon, Keisha. Hello, how's everyone doing this afternoon? So excited that everyone is well. You know, it is a beautiful Tuesday here. The sun is shining brightly. And I hope that everyone is having a joy-filled Tuesday. Go ahead and just send us some hearts and some loves and let us know that you are having a joy-filled Tuesday. Good afternoon. My sister Renita is joining in. Everyone, just go ahead and let us know how you're doing this afternoon. Well, you know, we want to continue in the month of uh, March. Yes, I see some of the hearts coming in. All right. <laughs> We're still celebrating Women's History Month here at the Renewal Center, and we want to continue that celebration of National Women's History Month, honoring the many contributions, uh, the many uh, contributions that women have made in our community, in our society, and in the world. So we're going to continue that as well. And, you know, last week, I just want to say last week before we move forward to our book of the week, we had an exciting interview and reading citation last week with author and poet Tanya Chandler, Tanya M. Chandler. So those of you that uh, weren't, but weren't able to make it, this is a great time to go to our Facebook feed and our YouTube and go back and look at that wonderful broadcast last Tuesday. Tanya M. Chandler, she's an author and a poet, and she shared excerpts from her book, Jericho Rose, An Expression of Life and Love. And, you know, as well as a special reading of her blog. And we just enjoyed that time. So if you missed that Tea Time Tuesday broadcast, we encourage you to go back and watch it. You'll also be able to find more information of how to get her book. So moving on to our book of the week. And good afternoon to our director of Digital Renewal, Hope T. Melton. Good to see you. I want to just go ahead and say that our book of the week in keeping in history, uh, Women's History Month is... Becoming a Woman of Excellence. Becoming a Woman of Excellence by Cynthia Hill. Such a great book. Just want to read a little of some synopsis of this book that's uh, actually on the back of her book. And it says, A Goal Worth Pursuing. That's right. Becoming a Woman of Excellence is a goal worth pursuing. Society beckons us to succeed, to achieve excellence in our appearance, our earning power, our family life. God himself also beckons us to be women of excellence. And so this book goes on to say, if you're hungry for God's perspective on success in a society that bombards you with conflicting demands, feed on the truth of God's word that you'll discover in these pages in the book. You will not only learn to approve the things that are excellent, but you will experience the joy of becoming God's woman of excellence. So, Becoming a Woman, Woman of Excellence by Cynthia Hill is in our thought room in our library here at the Renewal Center. And we're so excited to share that this month. So moving along with our tea of the week. Our tea of the week is grapefruit tea. <laughs> so, you know, we've been enjoying the many citrus variety, citrus of uh, citrus teas for the last couple of weeks. Uh, and so grapefruit tea, we want to talk about that. We want to highlight that. Grapefruit tea is an invigorating tea. It has an invigorating smell and an invigorating taste. Grapefruit tea is made from the juice of the ruby red grapefruit. You can steep it with honey or any, uh, I would say, sweetener of your choice. 
You can put in some cinnamon sticks and some allspice berries. That was that was interesting when I was reading about the allspice berries. It gives it a nice, very nice flavor. You serve it hot. And it's said to be very delicious. And I'm going to try that. I've, I said, okay, I'm going to have to try that one. And you can also add ginger for a little spice there as well. There are many variations to grapefruit tea. So yes, Nita, yes, grapefruit tea sounds delicious. And I can't wait to try this one. So I'm so excited. So what is your choice of tea today? Go ahead and put that in the chat. We would love to hear what you're drinking. I'm, I have um, my all-time favorite ginger tea and uh, i'm enjoying that this morning so go ahead and put that in the chat and while we are putting that in the chat let's take a moment to locate ourselves today and just like we always do for those of you that are joining in to tea time tuesday and you're new to tea time tuesday when we locate ourselves we're actually taking the time to pause to slow down and to gather ourselves so we'll be ready for our uh, renewal practices for the rest of tea time tuesday so let's take a moment Take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath wherever you are. Good afternoon, Michelle. It's good to see you too. Uh, okay, Keisha has coffee cream. Okay, Keisha, with the coffee today. <laughs> this is great. We're going to go ahead and locate ourselves. Take a moment. You know, as I was thinking about locating ourselves today, I thought about different bodies of water. I thought about the beach. I thought about the river. I thought about a calming stream. And I thought about my all-time favorite, the peaceful view of a lake. So while we locate ourselves, think about which, which one of these bodies of water brings you calm today. Is it the rapids of the river, the rolling waves of the beach? Is it the calming sensation of just being by a stream? Or is it the peaceful view of a lake? Let's take a moment and just locate ourselves. Just take a few minutes. One more second. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today with that time of locating ourselves. I see the, the tea of choice and the different drinks are coming in. I see that uh, Benita, my niece, it has pumpkin spice coffee. We have a lot of coffee today. Michelle has coffee with hazelnut creamer. I'm telling you. Okay, Renita has orange juice. Okay, Nita. <laughs> we have some really good drinks in there today. And this is really great time to actually pause and get ready for our time of uh, building resilience today. So we're going to bring in our executive director, Patrick J. Brown, for the rest of our Tea Time Tuesday. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> hey, I just took a <laughs> sip. I'm so thinking sorry. right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> That's okay. You were still locating yourself, so you I all think right. so. I think I was locating I mean, myself. Like Still relaxing there, okay? You're a little bit too renewed over there. Yes, yes. Good afternoon, Apostle Clyde Daniels. Thank you for joining us today. Yes, this is, this is so good. I tell you, Mel, um, today I uh, am grateful to be here because mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, we talked about not absorbing what we observe. Right, we did. And I just want to remind everyone to encourage us Let's not absorb what we see. Yes. Keep your head and your heart space clear. That's why we're here in Renewal Center. That's why we do renewal practices. That's why we locate ourselves. So today, I'm going to talk about honoring your non-negotiables. Yes. Mm. Honoring our non-negotiables. And so that's the focus that we're going to um, emphasize today during tea time. Okay. I mm -hmm. like that. I, I, I can't wait to hear what you have to share today. I have my notebook ready. You want to stay <laughs> on with me today or what you want to do? You want to just relax? What's up? I will. I think I will. One more time. I'll just stay in the background and relax today. Okay. I am taking notes. I am taking notes like I always I think everybody wants you to stay on, but I understand. Okay. I'll stay. I'm on. just teasing you. <laughs> 
All right, well, I'll bring you back on here shortly. Okay. Thanks. Hey, everybody, good afternoon. Patrick Brown here, Executive Director of the Renewal Center. Uh, Y'all know what Tea Time is about, so I want you to tag your friends, share them with them today. If you know somebody that's incredibly busy, always going, doing too much, doing the most, they need to hear this uh, or even replay this on our YouTube channel. So again, I just want to encourage you. That's what Tea Time is about. We're focusing on renewing ourselves. And part of that is having these types of pauses every single Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I just want to say hello to everybody. Welcome. Please tag someone. Please share. Uh, make sure that you read, uh, subscribe and push the notification button on our YouTube channel. If you're on there, please follow us because we're going to be even building out more content. And of course, always download the mobile app. So I want to just emphasize again the importance of different thinking that brings different results. And, and as a result of that, we're focused on honoring your non-negotiables, honoring your non-negotiables. So as we start out today, I want to ask you, what does a non-negotiable mean to you? What does a non-negotiable mean to you? What is that in your life? If you're out there, go ahead and place your comments in the chat, if you will, and share with us. What does a non-negotiable mean? Why do you think we need these? What's, what does a non-negotiable mean in your life? I'm going to spend just a few minutes on this today. And so, so well, why are we focusing on non-negotiables? Well, we're going to uncover that here shortly because this is really going to help us, help all of us navigate and building more resilience, but also beginning, beginning to manage and monitor what's going on in our lives. So I'd like to hear from you, if you will, what does a non-negotiable mean? What are your thoughts on that? What does a non-negotiable mean? Anybody, feel free. And then while you're thinking this through and typing out your comments about non-negotiables, I'd like you to just have maybe perhaps your journal, always have your journal with you. Always has something to write with because we're going to exercise some things. We're going to work on some exercises today. All right. So let's see. Hey, Nicole, good to see you. Good afternoon, Tina. How you doing? A stance I won't relinquish. A stance I won't relinquish. Absolutely. Anybody else? What does a non-negotiable mean? What does a non-negotiable? Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Good morning to you. What does a non-negotiable mean? Why are we discussing this? Because in the day that we're living in, there are a lot of different people and energies and perspectives and distractions that try to sap your mind, sap your experiences, sap your, your attention. And whatever we give attention to is where our energy is going to flow. So we want to have a discussion today about non-negotiable. What does that really mean in your life? So I'd like to hear from you if you're out there and you're watching today, because we're going to really work through some understandings of how we can make shifts in our lives so that we can build the proper boundaries. So Tina answered for us. She's kicked it off by say, stating a stance I won't relinquish. All right, let's hear a few more. Carmela says those are core values and those things that I will not compromise on. The most important things to me that I do. All right. What does a non-negotiable mean? Karen gets specifics and says, my non-negotiable is my peace, not being disturbed. Again, thank you, Tina. Thank you, Carmela. Thank you, Karen. Michelle says, non-negotiable means setting boundaries. Thank you. Yes. Anybody else? What does a non-negotiable mean to you? Carmela answers again here, top priorities. Anyone else? Please feel free to chime in. We want to hear from you today about non-negotiables. So th these are important because many times we end up violating our non-negotiables at times, perhaps, or we might have situations that try to derail us from our non-negotiables. So again, you're absolutely right. A non-negotiable is something that is not open for discussion or modification. <laughs> it's not open for discussion or modification. And sometimes we have, if we're not managing our energy and our time and how we use these th this time many times we uh modify or we change 
because of who or because of what or the situation. So uh, a non-negotiable is also something that is it's absolute, right? Um, we, we, I think we read one that says, a stance I won't relinquish. Something that's absolute. It, it is definite. Something that you will make happen. And again, this is important, especially in the world that we're living in, when we have a lot of other uh, competing priorities, we must look at our non-negotiables. And don't you dare feel guilty about reinforcing them. All right? No, no shaming, no naming, no blaming. That's what I like to say. No shaming, no naming, and no blaming when you are focusing on your non-negotiables and making sure that you maintain those, that you strengthen those, that you reinforce them in order for you to be productive. Again, so we've defined today what non-negotiables are. And it's important, again, all these questions, answers that are coming in, it's absolutely right. There are things that you're setting boundaries, their top priorities, their co-values. There are things that you will not compromise on, the most important things to you that you do, a stance that you won't relinquish. These are all important in order for you to be able to live a life where your head space and your heart space is at peace. Carmela says our non-negotiables are of the most importance. Absolutely right. We want to make sure that we take a look at those and ensure that we're reinforcing what it is to be a person that understands their non-negotiables. All right, so let's break this down a little bit further. I'd like you to also answer a question, and we're going to pause on this one today. I'd like you to answer this question. What is out of balance that you need to change, to shift, to remove, or even re-engage? Now, think about non-negotiables. Think about your energy level right now. Think about conversations you recently had the past week, the past month, interactions that you've had and then afterwards you felt a particular way. Ask yourself today, what is out of balance that you need to change, to shift, to remove or even re-engage? Now, again, you know what we do at tea time. What do we say? Sit with it. Locate yourself in this. So I want you to just sit with this, put it in your journal, let's take our time, and then please feel free to place that in the chat. Again, we're gonna take our time with this because we want, our focus today is about non-negotiables. It is about looking at where we are and how are we spending our time? How are we spending what's in our heart space and in our head space? And why we wanna emphasize that. So again, what is out of balance? that you need to change, to shift, to remove, or re-engage. Now, this is about your own development. And specifically, as we focus on Women's History Month, as, as, as women that are watching in particular, as you are leaving your own legacy and uncovering your own destiny and living with accuracy and how you're using your time, many times our history, what we leave in terms of legacy, it's based upon how we use our time. So really think about that as you're answering this question. I'm gonna put this up again for us to really reflect on this, all right? We'll take a, give you a minute, think through it. Mm -hmm. And as you're writing this down in your journal, I also want you to place your answer in the comments. Go right ahead. Place your answer in the comments. What is out of balance that you need to change, shift, remove, or re-engage? See, non-negotiables, friends, they're essential. Not just a matter of choice. They're essential to your life. It's not just choices. This is the essence of who we are. We have to recognize what we already have and how those non-negotiables already contribute to who we are. So let's pause it for a moment. Love to see some of these comments. Go ahead and place your comments in the chat to that question. And let me know if I need to bring this up again. Because again, we're, we're learning, we're building resilience by interacting and engaging with each other concerning this subject matter. 
I want you to really think this through. And I'm thinking about this as well. You know, perhaps what's out of balance. And I begin to think, what have I given too much headspace to? Hmm. Have I engaged in shaming, blaming, and naming? I'll bring it up again one more time for us. Absolutely. What is out of balance that you need to change, to shift, to remove, or re-engage? Now, change means that, that something needs to be transformed. Shifting, it means to move. We need to take a pivot and shift. Remove, we know what that means. Re-engage, maybe there's something that I let go that I need to bring that back up again in my life. I need to re-engage it, get back on course with it that I previously did not have. Now, again, we're looking at what's out of balance. We're looking at, and we know what those things are, right? Most of the time we know exactly what it is that we are out of balance with. So I want you to consider this as you're journaling, as you're reflecting, and as you're thinking through how you're going to honor your non-negotiables. Now, what you decide that is non-negotiable is entirely personal. There's no right or wrong here. So it's not about measuring. We do not measure non-negotiables. We don't measure non-negotiables. All right? What might be somebody else's non-negotiables may not be your non-negotiables. Again, we do not measure. Well, this is Carmelo's non-negotiable. Well, that's Carmelo's non-negotiable. That's Patrick's. That's Patrick's non-negotiables. Your non-negotiables are all about what it is that you're saying I'm not going to shift on because you understand why you have them. So we really need to consider this. All right. All right. Let's look at some answers that are coming in. Chiquita says influx of information shift from focus from incoming to filtering what I access and read to producing more information that is productive and forward thinking alone or in community. Thank you for sharing that. So that's an area that Chiquita says she's bringing into balance or changing or shifting or removing or re-engaging. Yet I'm going to bring up this one more time. Thank you for sharing that, Chiquita. Hope says it's very good point to reflect on. Absolutely. This is a reflective moment. All right. Bring in some of those more answers, folks. Let's hear from you. Let's, let's engage in, in this area today. Really sit with this. Really process this. And I thank you again for Chiquita for sharing this. That is so critical. Influx of information. We started out today talking about let's not absorb what we observe, right? There's so much that we observe in our world that we end up absorbing it. It internalizes it. And one thing I like to always say is whatever we magnify is what we're going to dispense. So if I magnify something in my life, that's what's going to be dispensed, dispersed, or it's going to be released in my life. And I, again, I am at the gate of my life. Mm hmm. Hmm. What are your thoughts on this? I know some of you probably are still there sitting there. Perhaps you're writing in your journal, you're processing. But we'd love to hear from you as we're taking this tea time moment. This is a renewal practice. Part of renewal practicing is looking at our non-negotiables in life and saying, okay, what, what's out of balance now? I think this is a good time to think about this. We're coming into spring, we're coming into April. There's a lot that's going on in our world, in our nation, across borders, across countries. What do we really need to consider? Hmm. Okay, let's, let's process this one. And I want to read a few, a few things and just kind of share a few things with you. As, as, you're, as you're writing in your journal and as you're answering some of these comments or providing comments to it. We know when we're out of balance. And so I want to emphasize just a few areas. And again, continue to answer, continue to journal, continue to write, because it's not about, it's about what you feel is, brings great value to you. It is about knowing, knowing what, uh, keeps you safe? What keeps you healthy? What allows you to thrive? Let me ask that question. Many times you can find a non-negotiable by answering the question, what allows you to thrive? And again, I want to say this again, that you do not have to justify your non-negotiables. You don't have to explain 
your non-negotiables. You live your non-negotiables because your non-negotiables will yield the fruit of health, the root, the root, the fruit of peace, the fruit of calm. Now, when we say peace, we're not saying that peace means that that there's no conflict. It means that you're going to focus more on any type of agitating passions that try to disrupt the normality of your living and making sure you're the guardian of what comes into your eye gate and your ear gate. Okay. So this is important that we consider this. All right. Let's hear some more answers. Yes, indeed. And sometimes we allow the magnification of non-essential information to define who we are, our, our identity. Absolutely. Don't absorb what you observe. Carmela, you're absolutely right. Filtering is important. Let's keep going. Vela says here, I've had to take a step back and consider my insecurities that don't relate to my now. Insecurities can be paralyzing. More positive affirmations and self-talk. Thank you for that transparency. When we step back, we're now asking the question, what is out of balance in me that I need to change? Change. I need to shift. All right. I need to shift it. I need to remove things. All right. Tina says here, I need to change, shift, re-engage spiritual practices, which keeps me centered. Absolutely. Now, as we're writing these down, you should be putting these in your journal. Put them someplace. Because, again, what we don't document, it didn't happen. <laughs> so we're going to document so we can do it. That's the purpose of the journal. We're creating history. We're creating legacies. And so, again, we have to consider that. I want you to write everything down today in your journal. Put it down because we're going to work on a few more practices before we finish today. And really think through what it is that we need to do to make sure that we're engaging in non-negotiables. Now, if you know some friends that are out there that you know good and well need to be in this conversation, you need to tag them now and say, you need to jump on tea time. Because you know you're doing all that. And you, <laughs> and, you know, you can talk to your friends like that, right? You need to come on here and you need to engage in this conversation. All right. So this is important that we do that. Again, I'll bring this up one more time. And let's just look at this for 30 seconds. What is out of balance that you need to change? That you need to shift? That you need to remove? Or that you need to re-engage? Now, many times when you're shifting, when we're shifting, sometimes we're slowing down when we're shifting. Sometimes we're moving forward when we're shifting. Sometimes we're, so when we're shifting, that's what happens when we're shifting. That's what we need to do in our head and heart space. Renewal practices, all right? Your boundaries, your particular non-negotiables are different than others, all right? So please feel free to chime in and share your ideas and your thoughts as you're watching today. So how are we gonna honor our non-negotiables? Before we move forward to our how, we've, just, we've identified why, we've identified what. Now let's discuss how. Let's think about how we're going to honor our non-negotiables. Oh, we have another comment coming in. Karen says, what allows me to thrive is centering, morning meditation, prayer, eating healthy and exercise, which gives me more energy. When I slack, I'm off balance. I appreciate you sharing that transparency as well. Because yes, when we slack, we are off balance balance in our lives. Thank you for sharing that. All right. So let's move on into how to honor our non-negotiables. Let's go here. All right. So how are we going to do this? Well, we have to examine how you currently use your time and your mental space. How do you currently use your time and your mental space? Really think about that. How do you use it? Mm. How much time are you spending scrolling to content that you just don't need? How do you use your time having a meeting after a meeting? <laughs> a discussion after a discussion? How much lingering do you let certain things stay in your thoughts? Examine. When we say use your time, we're talking about many times those are based upon your, your roles, your situations, or the relationships that you have. We have different roles in life. Our roles take up certain times. Situations take up time. Relationships take up space. Everything takes up type, type of space. 
And if I'm saying yes to one thing, I'm saying no to another. Hmm. So examine how you currently use your time and mental space. I found it before where I would say yes to something internally and I find myself, oh, well, if I say yes to here, I'm saying no to here. Examine how you currently use your time and mental space. Sometimes you got to involve those around you. If you know that there's a relationship, a friendship, you need to strengthen, you need to build it because relationships are everything, right? Then what are we doing to make sure that we're involving those that are around us? Right? You can involve people in setting non-negotiables. You know, some of you have already said you may want to establish them in your family. What about no screens at mealtimes? What about when we're out to eat, everybody just says no cell phone time? How about that? How about when we go grab a bite, we take this phone and we just turn it over and everybody put their phones in the center for one hour. I know some of y'all be like, oh, I, I, I got to look at the phone. <laughs> but imagine that. We come out, we're together and everybody take their phone. It's a good practice. And just everybody turn them over and everybody stacks them in the center and then say, hey, whoever grabs their phone first, they got to pay the tip. But again, let's make sure, folks, that we consider, you know, certain things that we can do that others can do to help us all uh, really build and reinforce some of those boundaries. OK. No phone at the dinner table. I hear you, Keisha. That's right. All right. So there's things that we got to do. There are things that we have to do. Or you know how you've been talking? Oh, we need to meet up for lunch and you still hadn't done it. Oh, we need to meet up for, for just conversation and you still haven't done it. You need to track that person down and say, you know what? Let's take out that calendar. That's right, you can take out this calendar right now. This is, this is our Carmela head practice. So I have your calendar out. <laughs> take that calendar out. Now I know I still have, I still have my regular calendar. I have my Outlook calendar from my job because I still like the tactile movement of writing my notes. But here's what I'm trying to say is that as I put it in there, I'm thinking about it. What I, I've also been able to track what I've done, how I've used my time. And then I can say, oh, I need to reinforce that non-negotiable. Uh, so folks, you need to go ahead and you need to really rethink. You really need to rethink about how you can involve other people Involve those around you. Thirdly, you want to begin with the end in mind. What is your end game? What do you want to see happen? That's one of the principles of the seven habits of highly effective people. Begin with the end in mind. What do I want to see happen? Maybe you need a bi-monthly, bi-weekly uh, type of meeting where you meet with people your, your thought leadership team, your creative team, that you just talk about creative things. And that's the only conversation you're going to have is we're going to talk about growth and creativity. See, there's special ways you can create non-negotiable things that feed your soul, feed your spirit. OK. And when you begin in the end in mind, that helps you with, with adopting a, a greater growth mindset. Now, this last point I want to bring up on the screen and I hope you're getting these notes here, is think about what would best support you and how do you want to feel and what do you want to do? So we're addressing your, your feeling space, your emotional space, and what you want to do. Those two, two things are important. Think about how, think about what would best support you. You know, here's a practical example of what I mean by that. When I started my doctoral program, I had to realize I knew I needed support because I'm going back again to school to get my doctoral degree. And because I've dropped out before, I was like, OK, uh, I didn't finish before. I need to finish this time. What do I need to do? So there are three people in my life that initially when I started, that they'll be with me not only now, but they'll be with me to the end. But there are certain things that they do that helps me uh, continue down the path of being productive and non-negotiables. -non you know, I'll hear from my dad, he'll say, keep pressing. Dr. Brown will always say that, you know? Uh, and I have two other males, one of them, I, one of my best friends, Glenn, Dr. Glenn, you know, people who are holding me accountable for specific areas. And that helps me 
in my non-negotiables that when I don't want to study, it's like, no, you need to do this. Here's what you need to do in order for you to get to where you need to go. So what does that mean? I have to think about what it is that would best support me. And how do I want to feel? I want to feel like I'm making progress, but not being perfect. So I said that out loud. I wrote it out loud. And I was like, I want to feel like I'm making some progress in my doctoral program. And I want to make sure that what I want to do, well, what I just want to finish. I want to learn. I want to grow. So because I began to think about those things, I created this group, this, this group around me that provides life to those areas in that non-negotiable of not of, of, of study, the non-negotiables of making sure that my time is set apart for those areas. And again, I encourage you, involve those around you, but begin with the end in mind. These are important practices. And be and, and I asked them specifically. Okay, I couldn't just say, just I couldn't just choose and just say, hey, because I have to understand, they have a certain amount of bandwidth as well. And so they were able to say, you know what, I can do that for you. And each of them provides a particular type of, of encouragement, accountability, reinforcement to a non-negotiable. Not saying that I could not accomplish these things by myself, but I also re recognize I need people. And when I realize that I need others and I want them in my life this way, it created a healthy space for me. Again, talking about non-negotiables. All right, let's move on to a few more principles I think I want to share with you today that I think will be helpful. All right. I'm going to give you some suggested non-negotiables. Six suggested non-negotiables. Let me know when you're ready. All right. It's important that we're able to do that. Accountability partners. Yes. Having a strong support system. Absolutely. Thank you. Being more conscious to give more margin in my life. Not planning every moment. This allows me to be flexible. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. All these great points that are coming in today. So I'm going to give you suggested non-negotiables. And again, sometimes they're actions, sometimes they're thought processes, but let's get ready. Here's a few. Basic, you've probably seen them before, but let's roll through them anyway. Here we go. Boom. Your sleep patterns. What are your sleep patterns? Well, I, I, I can survive off of five hours. No, you can't. I know y'all don't watch these TikTok videos talking about rich people, successful people don't sleep. Yes, they do. Your human body, you must rest. What are your sleep patterns? Set non-negotiables for your sleep patterns. What time do you go to bed and what time do you wake up? That's a non-negotiable you need to adapt like immediately. Resting is critical in order for you to be rejuvenated. What else? Another non-negotiable is take a daily walk. Every single day, I don't care if it's five minutes, get away. Don't bring your phone. Don't bring anything unless you're listening to music or something like that. Take a daily walk. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is. Daily walks are critical. Try to find a park. Try to find woods, a stream, sleep. Come on, everybody. Say that with me. Sleep, rest, getting a better time in your sleep patterns. Most of the time, when I'm irritated, it's because I didn't rest right. I was just all over the place. And, and then and here's what we say. Oh, you just don't understand. There's a lot of stuff going on. That's the problem. Again, reinforce the non-negotiable. Have some people check on you. Reinforce that. All right? We got to rest. What else do we need to do? Here's some more suggestions. Eat lunch away from your desk. Stop doing working lunches. Stop doing working lunches. Say, you know what? I'm not going to eat at my desk. You know what I decided to do? I decided to make sure. You wonder why I can always make tea time on Tuesday? Because I basically told my, my team I'm not meeting and I'm not doing working lunches on Tuesdays at 12. Period. Because you got to teach people you're non-negotiables because I enjoy being in this time. I enjoy this. It's important that we do this. Your sleep patterns, your daily walk, eating lunch away from your desk. What else? Stay off screens after 10 p.m. Try that. 
Turn that phone off. 10 o'clock hits, turn it off. Turn your notifications off. Don't look at it anymore. Oh, it's hard not to look at it because, uh, 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 again, if you're going to work on non-negotiables, stay off that screen. I know it's hard. We just want to look at it because it's just so wonderful. i got to stay connected to my, my devices. No, you don't. I grew up in a day and age we didn't have cell phones, <laughs> right? So stay off the screens after 10 p.m. I might even say 9 p.m. Stay off the screens. We know what happens to us biologically when we do that, all right? Stretch daily, number five. When's the last time you actually stretched? Did you even stretch today? Did you stretch today? What do you mean? Stretch releases toxins as you're drinking your water. Do some stretches during your day. I mean, you have to, you can just do stuff like this every, you know, 30 minutes or so. Get your stretch in, you know, learn certain stretches so that you can make sure you're managing stress. Drink your water. Stay off the screens at 10 o'clock p.m. Make sure that you're stretching daily. So after we finish today, you can even stretch. You can stretch while we're talking right now. All right? Just do some stretching. What do you mean? Add these as non-negotiables because all these things are going, these types of activities, these are just a few that you probably already do or maybe you don't, but perhaps these are practical ways to start saying, I'm building in a habit of having non-negotiables. All right? Let's bring this up one more time before we stop. Limiting sleep patterns. Daily walks, eating lunch away from your desk. Mm -hmm. Eat lunch away from your desk. Keisha says she's going to stop. start doing number four. Stay off the screens after 10. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, they're major and practical non-negotiables. Yes, thank you, Mel, for sharing that. Karen says she's doing four out of six. Karen, we're going to have to bring you on tea time and give us some of your practical principles. I'm going to hold you to that. Uh-huh. Share with us how you keep that balance. We, Everybody agree you should bring Karen on one of these days? <laughs> All right. Limiting that screen time. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing these, these principles today. That's right. Morning. That's right. Some, some of us need to learn how to do our stretches on a daily basis. Absolutely. Yeah, Mel says bring Karen on. Yeah, we're going to contact you, Karen. We're going to bring you on, have some conversations about this, this stuff. Renita says, I got to start all of these. Yes, 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 my sister, please. See, these are non-negotiables. They're practical. Some of you probably got some. Maybe we need to redo this again. Let's recap maybe in April to see how did you do but I really want to encourage you to work on these areas, your sleep patterns, your daily walks, eating lunch away from your desk. You know how it is. We order something. And not only that, you don't even need to get up anymore. You can just have them deliver it to you. See how we become? Just get your food, order it, sit there and work. And you know what we end up doing? We don't even taste the food. We just, just eat it up. Just, just going in. Not even sitting there chewing three times. And just, <laughs> just rushing through our meals. Not even sipping your tea. You're supposed to sip tea, not just drink it down. Stay off your screen at 10 o'clock. So in other words, you're going to have to let folks know, don't text me after 10, but I just need to talk. No, after 10, I, gotta, I have to rest. Maybe start with one day a week. Is that fair? I'm not saying you got to do it every day, but maybe choose Tuesday and Thursday. Choose some time that you says, this is the time that I'm going to disconnect from my screens, my electronic devices, and I am going to do nothing but sit on my back porch, sit on my front porch. I'm going to sit in a lawn chair and do absolutely nothing electronic. Hmm. I know that's hard. Some of y'all be like, oh, my God, I need, I need, I need my, my device. <laughs> Can't get away from it. Stay off that screen after 10 and stretch. Some of us need to stretch right now. Go ahead and stretch yourself. Extend your arm and stretch. Some of y'all probably hadn't stretched all day. You just got out of bed and just 
You went to work and did whatever you did. Stretch. Learn how to develop non-negotiables. And I know this might sound very practical and basic, and many of you probably already have mastered these things, but I just want to encourage us. If we're going as women, I want to encourage you women's history. I want you to be healthy. We want you to live healthy mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, physiologically in all these areas. And it starts with perhaps looking at my non-negotiables and what we need to do to make sure that we're honoring our non-negotiables. That fair? All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming on to Tea Time today. Just be before we close out, just want to give us one of your takeaways today, if you can. And I want to encourage you, if this is your first time or you're a uh, returning Tea Timer, I want to encourage you to connect with us here at the Renewal Center. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization here in the state of North Carolina. Uh, we have a global reach and we're grateful to partner with you. Please consider donating to the Renewal Center. Here are the various ways that you can donate or contribute to our vision and our mission. Um, here, uh, you can do it through PayPal. Uh, we also have the uh, our website as well, our cash app, which is Renewal Center. You can text to give Renewal Center to 888-361-4483 or always download the mobile app. Please make sure you do that or you can actually mail a check or money order to our PO box. I'll leave that up for you. And a uh, couple of more things I wanna announce before we bring Carmela back on. We have what we we have a prophetic gathering. It's coming up this weekend. There's still time to register. So wanted to show you briefly what's taking place this coming Friday. We're excited about it. Let me just share this video with you and it will come right back on. Ladies and gentlemen, join the Renewal Center for the 2022 Third Carolina Virtual Prophetic Gathering. The Contextual Leader, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, April 1st through the 3rd. Beginning Friday evening, Saturday, and convening on Sunday with the New You Live Digital Discipleship broadcast, Powerful Kingdom Message. This will be a great time of preaching, teaching, and sessions along with many. Oh, sorry about that. Didn't mean to, to reconnect that. I apologize. Let me play this one more time. The video went off for me. Uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen, join the Renewal Center for the 2022 Third Carolina Virtual Prophetic Gathering. The Contextual Leader, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, April 1st through the 3rd. Beginning Friday evening, Saturday, and convening on Sunday with the New You Live Digital Discipleship broadcast, Powerful Kingdom Message. This will be a great time of preaching, teaching, and sessions along with ministry worship leaders with powerful ministry gifts that will challenge and sharpen us to move forward in our assignments. First Chronicles 12 and 32 says, there were 200 leaders from Issachar. They knew what Israel should do and they knew their right time to do it. Join us for the prophetic and apostolic round table, which will be held on Saturday, April 2nd from 2.30 to 4 p.m. Facilitated with gathering convener, Apostle Patrick J. Brown. We are looking forward to an insightful discussion with some great servant leaders. This is a timely, very timely message, so don't miss this opportunity for kingdom growth and expansion. A decade of declaration and demonstration. See you there. All right. Thank you so much for just connecting with us. Uh, we look forward to having you there. We did place in the chat the Eventbrite links. We would encourage you to go ahead and register today. So, Carmela, welcome back. Any thoughts on our non-negotiables conversation today? Yes, yes. You know, I'm an advocate. I'm telling you, I'm an advocate for appropriating non-negotiables, you know. And it's because our non-negotiables are so... I can't even make, you know that appropriate uh, emphasis on that so important and critical for us for remaining balanced in our lives. And so, you know, many of us can really draw from a lot of these, uh, especially the six non-negotiables that you placed down. So I really, really like that, you know, especially the part about the temptation after 10 o'clock to keep the device going. We just can't seem to help it, can we? 
I know. We just got to just got to I'll tell you. Yeah, yes. just got to just got to do it. But we can start with one day. No, just one, one day. day. Baby yeah. steps are fine. Like you would say the little rocks, the little pebbles. Yeah. We do those. So, okay, good, good. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming on today from our team to yours. We appreciate just your being on board with us today. We're excited about the, the prophetic gathering that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Carmela Head, she's also a pastor here at the Renewal Center. She's going to kick us off on Friday. Uh, we're looking forward to the message Friday. Um, then Hope T. Melton, who's a prophet, she's on our team. She's going to kick it off on Saturday morning and the rest of the speakers that you saw. So we're excited about what's taking place this coming weekend. Please keep us in prayer. We're looking forward to connecting with you. So we did put the event bride in the chat. So please make sure you feel free to go ahead yes. and register today. Yes. All right. Well, again, thanks everyone for coming to Tea Time Tuesday. We'll see you next Tuesday, all right? And always remember, as we say here, I'm Renewal. Have a very good rest of your day. Bye-bye.